Hey, all good to be with you. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, you know, today's devotion, I just want to be a little bit frank with you all. Um, you know, we are in, we're in a season where we have been like, confined, right? I mean, there's lots of activities in our lives. They've just been stripped off. The parameters of our existence have been, have been narrowed way in. There's restraints as to what is normal now, right? Normal in everyday kind of activities. And we see, we're seeing people get sick all around us. I mean, we have, we have people that have passed away. And so there's a lot of fear. There's anxiety. There's mourning. There's grieving, you know, and then even in that, and even that grieving, it's very complicated because, um, people can't see one another and be around one another. And so, you know, we, we want to weep with those who weep, you know, and there are many, tears during this time um, with the parameters <clears throat> that have been set upon our lives it makes me ask the question you know like like what's God asking of me at this time right it's like what's he communicating to me and, and I mean you could go broad and just say well what's God doing and trying to get the whole big picture of it all I don't think he's going to show you that but what's he asking of me? You know, and, and that's the question that really needs to be, that really needs to be asked. When, when I see the, the, the parameters, the confinements that are there, I mean, you, we can blame it on the virus and one can say, well, you know, well, you know, the, the confinements are to help out other people or people that are vulnerable and I want to protect them and all, and sure, absolutely and all that. Yeah, but, but what's God trying to teach? me what, I mean, what's he calling what's he calling us to do i mean we, we look around it and we could just say oh you know this is a fluke of nature and it's a virus that was let loose and all this kind of stuff and we just have to endure it and we as long as we endure it all will be sunny at the end of it and we'll emerge stronger than ever and make a whole pep rally about that whole thing that's extremely shallow naive and it misses the whole point you know, there is something where God, I, I believe, like God is trying to capture the church's attention. Look, when you have a child, and uh, you know, the child is bouncing all over the place and stuff, and you have something that you really need to communicate to them, something that's like extremely important. Often times what you do is you, is you, you, you call them over and you grab them by the shoulders, you put your hands on their shoulders and you look them straight in the eye. And then you talk to them, you communicate to them. And then they understand at that point in time that there is this intensity, that there is this urgency that the parent is trying to relate to them. It might be something that they have to go and do as well. Okay, well, can it be that this confinement and this stripping away of all the activities, the narrowing of the parameters, you know, is, is could this be that God is just trying to grab hold of our shoulders? And he's trying to speak to us the urgency of something that he sees? Like the urgency, like there's something there that he desires for us to just engage in. Yeah. Yet, in our confinements, you know, there's still plenty to do. I, I, I mean, you know, we can entertain ourselves. We could pass the day, you know, of, of, of working if you, if you have that, if you're blessed with that ability or pass the day on social media or we're going to catch up on all these movies we've been missing out. And we could do, we can like pretend this whole thing is like a stay vacation. I'm sure ignore the news, you know, ignore those who are who are weeping during this time. Um, hope that the thing doesn't touch us. Well, it, it actually already has. But where do we become wise like the sons of Iskar, where the scripture says that the sons of Iskar had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. So what to do? Well, you know, when a parent holds you by the shoulder, one of the first things we need to do is to listen. Right? I mean, that's the whole reason why the parents got their hands on our shoulders. It's to confine, confine the child so that all other activities won't distract them at that time. And I know I've been communicating this kind of the same thing over and over again, but I believe it's so important. You know, we cannot hear. We cannot hear God if we're not desiring to hear. 
We cannot listen if we're not willing to listen. We can just transfer all our busyness from yesterday, right? From, from, from before the virus. We can transfer all our busyness to other things in the lockdown. Or we could transfer them in a pressing into God and hearing from Him. I was reading First Samuel the other day about King Saul, the first king of Israel. I mean, the man was just awesome at first. He was humble, and God just blessed him. It was just amazing like that. But then he did what so many do. Uh, they can't handle the blessings of God, and the humility went to pride. You know, and whatever reason that is, maybe there's not a checkup on a regular basis with God, or maybe, you know, my time of meeting with God becomes less and less because I've got other things I've got to do, and I'm so busy in the world. And whatever, whatever, the king got to this place well you know he had to do war and all that stuff but he was in this place of where he had to wait upon God and wait upon God for Samuel the prophet Samuel to come and offer a sacrifice but Saul's men began to scatter and time was getting late you know and everything was pressing around him and it looked like everything was falling falling apart and in short Saul thought I need to go and do something I need to take action and so he goes and he offers the sacrifices himself instead of waiting for Samuel who was the only one who could offer the sacrifices and of course when it when he was all said and done when as soon as the sacrifices were, were over who shows up you know Samuel shows up in first Samuel 11 this is what Samuel said to Saul he said what you have what have you done and Saul said, and here's the excuse, when I, when I saw that the people were scattered from me and you didn't come with, within the days appointed that the Philistines gathered together to Michmash, then I said, the Philistines will now come to me at Gilgal and I haven't made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering. Uh, you, you know, there's always going to be an excuse on why not to wait. And uh, we can always turn it into a religious excuse, just like Saul did. And Samuel said to him, Samuel saw right through it, right? He said, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established you and your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord, listen to this, the Lord has sought for himself a man, so a, a person after his own heart. You know, the Lord's always seeking after a person, after a people, after his own heart. In Chronicles, God spoke to um, King Asa and said, The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the entire earth to show himself strong on behalf of one whose heart is loyal unto him. And then he had to turn to Asa and say, What a fool you have been. Like you've been given this opportunity to seek him, but you always found something else to do. Like you were given this time to be loyal and to get your heart right before him, but like there was always something else that always came up. Like confinement was given, but you just pushed against it to make yourself unaffected by it. The Lord sought for a person after his own heart, and I just pray You know, I pray that he'll find it in you and me. To, to Moses, God said this. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Uh, so what does that look like for you? Look, I don't know. I don't know what it looks like for you. God knows what it does. Uh, what's, what's he asking of you? Look, if you have trouble praying or knowing, like, how do I even begin to wait upon God? Because all I've done is come before him with the flurry of activities that I go into everything else with. Um, you know what? Would you just go over to the prayer course. We've been doing this. It's the prayercourse.com. We've been journeying through that on Thursdays as a church at seven. We continue to do that. Um, but there's sections. There's a section in the prayercourse.com, right, where it's called the tool shed. And in there, you'll find lots of resources on how to pray, how to be silent, how to set up a quiet time, all of that stuff. It's, it's in there. Look, all I know is this. Yesterday's seeking of God was fine for yesterday. Today is a new day and God is calling us closer. And I pray that you and I will respond to that call. God bless you guys. God bless you guys on this journey. It's 
amazing journey that he has for us to be walking in and in a time such as this. Let's show him that there are hearts that are loyal unto him and that are seeking after him. God bless you.